pjnet.tv on Thursday night, March the 19th. We're getting started with Melissa Henderson. She is standing by in our green room. Let's uh, go down the checklist. The bumper is running. We have background ready. We are recording. We are streaming live on all platforms. Let's switch to Studio 6 in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Welcome to pjnet.tv. Good to see our happy campers in the pjnet.tv chat room. I love it. Of course, I have to do this whether you're here or not, but it just makes it so worthwhile when I'm not by myself doing this, as it was for so long. <laughs> God is good, folks. Uh, listen, we are privileged, uh, blessed, and honored uh, to have a first-time guest with us uh, tonight. Now, she is no stranger to PJ Net, but she's never been on that stage right there. So, um, as you can see, we have brought, uh, in, in advance of her appearance, we have brought Licky the Lizard to us, and I never... Um, I, you, some people you meet them one time and you just never forget and I first encountered uh, Melissa at the I believe the North Carolina Christian Writers Conference a year, the last one not the recent one but before that and and she just got that look and, and she just said Licky the Lizard you know and it was like Woody the Woodpecker da 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 that image will always be seared into my soul what a what a happy countenance you bring to all those who surround you melissa and so as i started asking uh, melissa about where did this where did this come from uh, melissa i just assumed that you were a just lifelong lover of lizards and all thing lizard or you had li lizard skin purses or something not so much. No, no, not at all. But thanks for having me on tonight. This is very exciting. But yes, I have, by some unknown reason, become known as the Lizard Lady. And uh, that is not my intention, wasn't my intention from the beginning. But uh, I, I decided that I, I wanted to write a story about lizards because we moved from Virginia to South Carolina in 2017 and wow, lizards everywhere. And I would open the front door and lizards were hopping here and there and scurrying across the screen porch. And I was um, basically every time I opened the door going, ah, you know, and uh, finally decided, no, no, I'm going to write a story about this for our grandson. Our grandbaby was about to be born, and I wanted to write a story about lizards, a story for him. And so I wrote this story to show myself and others that God created the lizards. God created us. There's no reason to be afraid of the lizards. And so in the story, the, the lady is afraid of lizards until she remembers God loves us all. God created us all. And and she becomes friends with the lizards. Now, I'm not saying that I go out every morning and, you know, speak to all the lizards, but uh, the lady in the book does speak to Licky. She names him Licky the Lizard because he sticks his tongue out and <laughs> licks everything in the air, and that's what lizards do, catch bugs and things and with their long tongues. So uh, um, the lady finally decides to say, good morning, little lizard, and Licky replies by sticking his tongue out. So... <laughs> That's where Licky the Lizard came from. So, so uh, I'm not a writer, but you're inspiring me. Maybe perhaps I should write a book about rattlesnakes, you know, because I don't really like them, and uh, they stick their tongue out, and <laughs> and God created, whole... God created them too, you know. And they... That's a whole different creature, though. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we have to be afraid of the lizards, but now rattlesnakes is a different thing. And, yeah, they, and, uh, they can create some, some problems. Yes. Um, I remember, uh, you know, uh, we voted here in Florida Tuesday, and I went down to the polling place, and a relative a, that married into the family, the first, the very first job I had, um, among other tasks, was take, pulling the weeds out of the peanut patch. 
And there were about six of us. We were 15 or we were 15 of, or 14, I forget, at the time, uh, making a dollar ten an hour, I remember, uh, in the hot Florida sun. And, and pulling these weeds out of the peanut rows, you know, so that they could harvest them later on. And, and I reached down to pull up what I thought was a weed, and that thing started, it pulled its head back and started making that rattle. <laughs> and I jumped straight up in the air, you know. I bet. I bet. And I, I was telling this, this lady who was the daughter-in-law of the man that uh, Fred Boyd, uh, was his name and he came out there like he's an old he's pretty old at the time he was like my age <laughs> and uh, <laughs> had a hoe and he cut that snake's head off right promptly and saved my life basically um, oh. and, and it's funny because other people had walked right by that snake oh. um, but I reached my hand down there thinking it was it was definitely not a peanut so if it's not a peanut it's a weed I was gonna pull that thing up oh that's and, too scary uh, I was oh, telling no. her about that and um you know, the problem is the rest of the day, I didn't get any work done because everywhere I looked was a snake, you know, I mean, just, yes. you know, you ever have, a... I digress. Uh, <laughs> interesting. This is the South and we, we have snakes and moccasins and lizards. My father used to water the tomato plants. You know, he had a little, you know, he grew a few tomatoes and he got there with a the hose in the heat of the, when he got home. So it's well into the eighties, nineties and higher. And he would take that garden hose, and those lizards would just come from everywhere to just, you know, get in that shower of that cold, you know, tap water coming out of the garden hose. But yes. um, how do you write a story about a lizard? I mean, I just told a story. What? what? Well, that that's the very beginning. You think about your own experience. That's how I did it. Uh, um, and then just start from the beginning. And then in writing, um, I, I write other things, too. Inspirational messages or write my blog, three other blogs. I mean, I, I love to write. So in the very beginning, just, just think about your story. You've got a story with, about the rattlesnake right there. Um, the, I'm working on uh, one about an alligator now, which is a, a, a way to show how to show um, reverence for the alligators and not to go to the pond to, to see the alligators, but see them from a distance because we do have a lot of alligators around here too. So, mm -hmm. I remember I was fly fishing with my father, and you know, you 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 basically work that lure, you know, and you just move it about six inches over against the lily pad, the line of lily pads or whatever, and you know, you're looking for a boundary, an edge, or a stump, or a log, or something. And I'm working at my father's back there watching me, you know. And, he sees that alligator and I don't because I'm focused on fishing. And the next thing you know, I put that, that darn fly right there about six inches from that gator's, you know, nose. And he roared and jumped uh -huh. and he, and the line snapped. And my father said, you didn't see that gator? He, he, you've been within three foot of him for five <laughs> minutes. I said, dad, you didn't say anything. He said, I wanted you to remember this. <laughs> yes. oh, <laughs> that was a long time ago. And you know what? <laughs> We used to, we literally would go frog gigging at night on Lake Miccosukee. And the, the, when you get to the landing, the warmth of the sun had warmed the concrete of the landing. We would have to run off about four or five gators that were up there, you know, because it was warmer. Yes. Anyway, did you have anything you wanted to say? I'm just reminiscing here. You're, oh, you're no, making no, me I... remember a great childhood growing up. <laughs> well, the first time I saw an alligator when we moved to South Carolina, in our neighborhood, I saw one on the bank, on the pond across the street, and I thought I was seeing some big thing, and I ran to the neighbor next door, banging on the door, you know, and she opens the door, and I said, oh, there's an alligator, and very calmly, my neighbor says, oh, he's there every day, <laughs> and that was my first experience with, oh, oh, we have alligators here, oh, they're, mm -hmm. they're in the neighborhood, they're yeah. everywhere. Keep so. the dogs inside, please. Yes, yes, yes. So, but you know, God has made these creatures and we just have to be careful around them and we can find joy in everything. So I find joy in looking at the alligators from a distance. And well, um, I'll be like, uh, I remember on the campaign trail, you know, uh, Ted Cruz was running for president or whatever. And you know, he, 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 he's not known for his environmental record, you know, and so they wanted to build, they wanted to do some drilling and somebody brought up an objection saying that that particular piece of land was habitat to some kind of lizard. And Ted Cruz just so 
so coyly said, I love lizards. They make dang good boots. <laughs> oh, oh, my. Oh, my. I, I did do a reading at a doctor's office one time, and they didn't tell me that they were bringing in a lady from North Carolina that had brought reptiles with her. Hmm. And I just thought I was there to read the book for the children. And uh, she brings in cages and cages of them. Uh, I said, please don't bring snakes. She said, no, I didn't bring snakes, but all kinds of alligators. So I, I'm not alligators, excuse me, lizards. So I have a little lizard sitting on my shoulder while I'm reading the book. And so, yeah, but not alligators. <laughs> okay. Do you know how to tell the difference between an alligator and a crocodile? Oh, uh, man, you know, I've been asked that before. And does it have something to do with the nose? Kind of. Um, oh, my gosh. Now, Melissa, I'm going to give you this answer under one condition. If What's you're that? ever on a game show and this question is posed and you win, you've got to share the money with me, okay? That's hey, that sounds good. Worthless trivia. An alligator with its... First of all, we don't have many crocodiles here in the, in the United States compared to, like, Australia. But a crocodile, when they close their mouth, their teeth show. Their teeth go outside their mouth. Mm-hmm. Their snout. They have a they have a, a a narrower snout. But of course, when you see them at a, you know, if you see teeth and their mouth is shut, that sir, ma'am, is a crocodile, and they are far more aggressive. Alligator will basically they're they're not predatory for humans. Uh, there has to be some intervening circumstance. Um, but I see in the chat room that I'm I'm disappointed because our next guest J D. Uh, claims in there somewhere that he's a University of Florida fan, and we don't call them gators. We call them um, water lizards. Is what we call water. Them. <laughs> <laughs> well, I did not know that. See, I'm learning all kinds of trivia tonight. You've you've been in Florida, have you? Didn't you spend some time in Florida? Oh, well, I've only been to Florida to visit. The theme well, water. we want you to come back, okay? Because <laughs> it's suckers. I mean, tourists like you that support our state. <laughs> Well, you know, we have to get out, uh, through all this uh, serious virus stuff, you know, before the, the oh, yeah. things start happening. The governor, the governor today closed the beaches. I mean, here it is spring break, and he said, party's over. Oh. Yeah, that's going to hurt. That's going to yes. hurt. Yes, yes. ma'am. Did you it, know, in the midst of all this, one thing I have noticed in our neighborhood, and I keep telling people this, I have noticed more parents and grandparents outside with children Playing ball, playing Amen. basketball, soccer, riding bicycles, taking a walk around the block. And where I, I used to hear the school buses in the morning, I have not hearing them right now. But about afternoon, I start hearing lots of laughter. And I look outside, and there's baby dolls, and there's you know, strollers, and families doing things together, which they're, you know, usually the parents are at work, children are at school, come home late in the evening, they're tired out. But right now I'm seeing some family togetherness that I'm really enjoying, you know, listening to the laughter and seeing the, the parents interact with the children and the grandparents, too. I'm glad you said that, Melissa, because one of the things that we do here is we're going to stay positive. You know, we're going to, you know, because yes. we've, you know, we, we, we as Christians have hope. And, yes. and I am glad to hear you report that. But I have to share another story that I got today. I got a phone call today from one of our own, uh, Rachel Colby. And she said that she is getting together um, a supply of toilet paper. She's like everybody else. She's hoarding it. But listen to this. You know what she's going to do with all that toilet paper? She's going to take it around the neighborhood and knock on doors and offer it to her neighbors as a ministry ah. and share the gospel of Jesus Christ with them while she's there. Wonderful. Wonderful. A, a new ministry is born, folks. A toilet paper yeah. ministry. And if who would have thought of all things, you know? Well, that's looking for the, you know, uh, what was it Zig Ziglar said? Um, uh, no, it wasn't him. It was uh, um, Think and Grow Rich. Uh, mm -hmm. In every cloud of adversity is the seed of opportunity yes yes and I think there are opportunities out there um, your your book is talking in in 
general terms introducing children to this notion that God created nature and the, all that. And, and how, how deep can you go with kids? At what age, what age group are you aiming at? And just how deep can you go with them? Well, with this particular book, it's very interesting. I have had people from parents and grandparents, aunts and uncles, buy the book for newborns to read to the newborns and show the bright colors all the way up to third grade, depending on reading level. Mm -hmm. I've read to kids of different ages. Um, when I read a book, or when anyone reads a book, it's all how you put the expression. You're holding the book and you're turning the pages and you show your expression, your voice changes. The kids love that. So even a newborn can, it, can listen and watch your eyes, your face make expressions, you know. Ah! when I see the lizard, you know, eek, you know, uh, just changing the voice. So, um, you know, adults and children are enjoying this book, I'm finding out. So I love that. I love, love that being able to share the message that, that God created us all and God loves us all. Well, and, and um, God created the boll weevil. And, you know, I, I understand when I see, you know, people say, well, the mosquitoes, you know, here in Florida, we have mosquitoes that we shoot with, with shotguns. I mean, they're, the state <laughs> bird is a mosquito here in Florida. Huge. They're, they're huge. And, um, but, but the mosquitoes are food to the dragonfly and, and the dragon and, and to the bats. And, it, you know, so you can see the food chain, you know, yes. at work. And you can say uh, people don't like possums. You know they're kind of ugly and greasy looking. You know, but possums eat ticks. They they can eat up to two hundred ticks a day. Oh, and so the God. the balance of nature is is a is a testimony. Nature declares the majesty of the Creator. And so yeah. I get it. Okay. Except the boll weevil. I <laughs> cannot figure what possible good. A boll weevil is doing because it lives inside that little ball of cotton, so the birds can't get it. It destroys the the, the harvest. Uh, so when I get to heaven, I I have some questions, and uh, I was, that will. I was just going to say that when when you get to heaven, you can ask because we don't need to know every answer while we're here on this earth, you know. Now, but when we get to heaven, we can certainly ask. Now in Enterprise, Alabama, in the town center, you know, those look like a roundabout, you know. Yes. They have erected a monument to the boll weevil, believe it or not. Oh. I, <laughs> like, <laughs> More trivia. More. Yeah. <laughs> <I'm not okay. laughs> Folks, I have not had anything to drink tonight. I just really am <laughs> feeling great about life, you know, and and that's what we do here. So um, your your book, uh, Licky the Lizard, has been out for about what over a year now, right? Uh, it came out in August of 2018. 18. Okay. Yeah, well, that'll be close to two years then. So, yes. so, it, so, what's the shelf life on on book sales like that? Does it kind of start out? Does it does it ramp up and then taper? Is it a bell curve, or well, does it? <laughs> it all depends on how you market it, and I do all the marketing myself. So I participate in a lot of vendor events and author signings and uh, just word of mouth, and so it. it you can keep your book sales up if you're willing to do the marketing. And I love meeting people. I love talking, as you can tell. So, I, so I have no trouble marketing. So, what was your last event like? I mean, that sounds fun to me. What a way to retire. I mean, or, or oh. work or whatever. Well, oh, uh, it's fun. Uh, well, there is uh, there was a, a local um, market that was having uh, local vendors come in and sell books or what you know whatever jams jellies whatever those are always fun because you meet a lot of people and, and uh, some of the schools uh, some of the christian academies hold uh, merry marts and things like that those are great events i love meeting people making lots of contacts and uh, meeting other writers too so because i'm a member of several writers groups and and that's always fun to meet other writers and discuss you know what you, what's your work in progress you mm -hmm. know uh, and people say, what do you write? Well, I write in a lot of different genres, so I can't say just children's books. <laughs> I write a lot. So, but events are great. You know, it's a way to meet people and make contacts and share the love of God and share, have a smile on your face and show the joy in your heart. You know, Melissa, you and I are both very blessed that we are able to 
make, I, I don't want to say I'm making a living at this, I'm not, but, but, you know, if you have fun at what you're doing, you'll never work a day in your life. And that's, I, I get that sense that you're on that kind of journey. Right. My stories, thing, articles, devotions, nonfiction stories, whatever I write, my goal is to draw people closer to God so that they will have a relationship with God, whether they are starting out new and just seeking a relationship with God or drawing closer to God. That's the purpose of my writing, not making money. That's, you know, that's a, a second thing. Oh, sure, that's great. But if I can have somebody read a story or book and draw closer to God, that's great. I forgot to put it up there earlier. MelissaGHenderson.com <laughs> is your website. Uh, yes. I, I wanted to uh, expound on that, but I got distracted. You just said something that cued yet another uh, thought in, in my mind. I guess it's just, you know, there's two things about getting old. And one of them is your memory starts to fail you. So you can't say you're old till you're 100. My mama always said that. You're not old until you hit 100. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm closing <laughs> in on it. <laughs> <laughs> what we'll have to do, since you write in so many genres, is uh, we'll have to do this again when I'm not on, uh, when I've, you know, had some sleep and not so crazy. Um, and talk about some of your other genres because you do have many. But folks, visit Melissa G. Henderson, uh, dot com and you can find out a whole lot more. Melissa, this has been so much fun. Thank you. Uh, thank not only you. for being here, but thank you for, for just living the life you're living and, and sharing the, the, the Word of God the way you're doing it. What a fun way to go about it. It's not even, it, it's just a joy being around. You know, so many Christians, uh, what would my pastor used to say? They could eat a corn on the cob through a picket fence. You know, their face is so long. <laughs> 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 good but we are out of time sweetie and let's do this again because i want to hear some more from you and we've got jd coming up here in just a few minutes so melissa thanks for all that you're doing and and we love you and we just want to encourage you in every way appreciate you sharing tonight thank you so much that was fun gosh i have the greatest job in the world folks folks you all make this so worthwhile uh, to me, you know, I've had a rough day. I've been pummeled, okay. But this is this is my space. This is this is where everything's right. This is where it's really good, folks. I got to get out of here because we're coming back in just a few minutes because J D Winninger uh, will be here to take us around the cross W. Uh, go if you haven't done so, go to jdwinninger.com right now and read his blog about the defective calf. It's really great. I'm going to leave you with two questions. I'll be right back. I'll ask them again at the end of that one. Question number one, what is the boldest thing you've ever done for Jesus Christ? And then question number two, when was that? Folks, let us never be satisfied with either answer. <laughs>